All right, this is a demo of the Rio Rand uh, 400 watt, six to 60 volt PWM DC brushless electric motor speed controller. Uh, on the board, it has a part number right here listed as ZSX11H. Uh, one side has the power input. Uh, you can see markings. Underneath the circuit board, we have ground, VCC, MC, MB, and MA. So these are the motor phases. You've got your Hall effects uh, sensor input right here. And then you've got your control input on this side, which you've got a 5 volt PWM. This PWM controls the speed. You can also input 0 to 5 volts. Um, it's another uh, ground. Then you've got your direction, brake and five volts. So I've got this set up right here. I have a hoverboard motor that came out of a Hover One Eclipse. Uh, I've got a 36 volt um, lithium ion battery connected into the power. I've got my phase, motor phases connected here and this is my Hall effect sensor. I soldered on an extension cable for that. On this side, I have my brake switch that goes from 5 volts then to the through the switch and to the brake connection. Then this one is my direction switch. So I have 5 volts, goes through the switch and to the direction. So, and I'm going to be controlling the speed using this built-in trim pot that you can turn to adjust the speed. Alternatively, if you take off this jumper, you can feed your pulse width modulated signal or a zero to five volt signal into that pin to control the speed. So if I start turning this, you see the motor starts turning. It actually control, able to control at a really low speed. That's about as low as I can go. And then I can go pretty high speed. And then back down. Now the brake works pretty well. You switch the brake and the motor stops. And you switch it and it goes. And you can also see I can spin the motor by hand fairly freely. And then if I switch the brake and it kind of, I can still move it, but it's a lot harder to move. And then I switch it back and it's free to spin. I just spin it and switch it and then it stops. So the brake works pretty well. And direction, uh, I switch this and the motor will go the other direction. Probably don't want to switch this at high speeds, but at low speeds, you can just go back and forth. Higher speed switching direction. Yeah, that still works. Might be better to apply the brake, switch direction, and go. So overall, this uh, motor controller works pretty well. I'm going to hook up a logic analyzer so we can look at the signals of the Hall effect sensors. And it also has, let's see if we can see in here, um, there is two pins right here that the data sheet or the information on Amazon says that it is a speed control pulse output signal and it says it's undocumented. So I'm going to hook up a logic analyzer to that so we can see what that signal looks like. Okay, so now I have my Sele logic analyzer connected to the Hall effect sensors. I have channel zero connected to the white wire, uh, channel one connected to the yellow wire, channel two connected to the green wire, and then channel three connected to that SC output, the speed control pulse output. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna do a 360 degree spin on the motor by hand and look at the signals on the logic analyzer. So that'll just go like this. 
that's 360 degrees and we'll look at that signal. So here are the signals from the Hall effect sensor on the logic analyzer. As you can see, I have the white wire, which is the HA signal, the yellow wire, which is the HB signal, green HC, and this is the speed control pulse output that says it's undocumented online. Um, when I described my hookups, I actually reversed the second and third channels. You can see this channel zero, one, this is actually channel three and channel two. So with one revolution of the motor, uh, you actually get 30 transitions from high to low or low to high on each of these Hall effect sen sensors. Now the speed control output pulse, every time one of these sensors transitions high to low or low to high, you get a transition on it. So you do 30 times three, you get 90 transitions on this signal for one rotation of the motor. Now this is for the motor I am using, um, uh, which is a hoverboard motor, uh, which it may be different if you're using a different kind of motor. I'm not sure if all hoverboard motors are the same, but this is the motor that I'm getting, or the signals I'm getting off of my motor. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the speed controller up a little and get it spinning. And we'll look at that signal on the logic analyzer. Okay, so these are the signals from the logic analyzer when I'm running the motor at low speed. Uh, so to actually figure out your RPMs, you can use this speed control output pulse signal and measure the frequency. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go on a rising edge and then find the next rising edge. And that'll be my period of my signal, which is this 22.7 milliseconds. So I'll bring over my calculator and I'm going to do 22.7 zero five six eight and that's in milliseconds so e to the negative three and then to find out the frequency you take the period and you invert it so i'm going to use this little x to the negative one and invert this so my frequency is about 44 hertz and now to figure out the revolution of the rpms you can take the frequency and divide it by 45 because the frequency is from one rising pulse to the next rising pulse. So there are actually 90 transitions per second with this motor. So you could actually take this 44 and times it by 2 and divide it by 90 or you can just divide the frequency by 45 which is a little easier, a little one less step. So that gives us uh, almost one revolution per second. So now to get RPM, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So you would just times that by 60. And that gives us 58.7 RPM. And that's uh, it's running at low speed. All right, so now I'm going to go full speed on the motor and look at that signal, see how fast this is uh, controlling this motor. So let's turn it up to... So there is full speed, everything is jiggling around. Okay, uh, we'll look at that signal on the logic analyzer. So now here is the signals from the logic analyzer running at high speed. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did at low speed. I'm going to figure out what our RPMs was. So I need to measure the frequency of my speed control output. So let's go from a rising edge to another rising edge, which gives us 1.45 milliseconds. So bring in my calculator, 1.45304 e to the negative 3 invert that to get the frequency 
divide it by 45. So this is 688 hertz divided by 45, which gives us 15 revolutions per second. And times that by 60, which gives us 917 revolutions per minute. So that's, that's pretty fast, pretty good. Now, um, I also, offline, I, I calculated this to into miles per hour. And you have to know your diameter of your wheel, which my wheel is 7.5 inches. So at 917 RPM and a 7.5 inch wheel, that gives us about 20 miles per hour. Now that's unloaded. The, the wheel was free spinning. It didn't have any load on it. So once I actually put a load on it, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able to get this thing to go 20 miles per hour. But we'll see, once I get it all built up, what it can do. So that's how you figure out, how you read the uh, speed of your motor using the Hall FX sensors and the speed output pulse on this board. Um, I wish the manufacturer would document it a little, but I guess that's why I'm making this video. So, so hopefully this will help somebody else uh, when using this board.